Thank you so much for my patrons. I super appreciate all of the support. And I am done. Okay, so I just finished up The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Eilington. This is the first book in the Lycanius trilogy, and I want to give you my unedited thoughts upon finishing the book, which was just now. So this book was just, eh, you know, it was okay. Uh, not great, not horrible, like a three out of five. It's, it's okay. Um, I'm disappointed. Um, this review is going to sound very negative because ultimately I think there was a lot of, you know, a lot of great ways this book could have gone that it just never hit those high peaks for me. You know, I, I always think that a great fantasy book doesn't need to be great in everything, but it needs to be great in something. And this book just didn't have it. Um, I can't pinpoint anything that I really loved about this book. So yeah, ultimately just left with a lot of disappointment. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna end up continuing on with this series, because there's so much great fantasy out there uh, that I have a lot left to go before I'm to the point where I'm gonna say, yeah, you know, I wanna keep on going with the series that only got a three out of five in the first book. Now, if people start commenting in on this and start telling me, Matt, you're missing out. The first book's just like that, but the next ones are gonna rock. Maybe I'll reconsider. But as of right now, yeah, this is a one and done for me. Um, so let us start talking about the story. Uh, now the story here, it's a Wheel of Time clone. That's what this story is. Now that's not the worst thing in the world. I, I like Wheel of Time. I really like Wheel of Time. But I did find that the first book in the Wheel of Time is one of the worst books. Um, and that's what this one is cloning. Now, I get that Wheel of Time is a Lord of the Rings clone in the beginning, but this one has so many similarities to Wheel of Time that I have to say that's the book that it's about because this is, this is a journey story, um, ultimately, with a very traumatic event that happens near the beginning of the story that forces our characters on a quest. Um, and you know, this book starts out in a school setting. I'm a big fan of school settings. I'm always entertained by them. Uh, we don't get to go there very long though because something happens and we go on this, this huge journey. Now, this school, it, it's, it's an interesting concept because you have these magic users, a magic school, you know, and they, they're, but they're outcast. You know, there's two, essentially two different aspects of society. You have those that can use magic and those that don't. And the ones that can use magic are the ones that are on the outs. They are super repressed compared to everybody else. And that is kind of the opposite of what we normally find in fantasy, right? I mean, you find oftentimes that the magic users are the ones in charge of everything, but not the case here. Um, now you got the main character and extremely early on, so I'm not spoiling anything. He finds out that while everybody can use magic A, you know, the, the, the main magic here, there is a forgotten magic that people don't have anymore that, surprise, surprise, he finds out that he can do it. And that's uh, the, the kind of the big hook at the beginning of this book. And it kind of goes on from there. I don't want to ruin the story for you. I think the story's decent. You know, I, I think the later on the story goes, the more it kind of diverges from Wheel of Time and Lord of the Rings and becomes its own thing. And I think the more it does that, the better it, it got. So the story's, you know, one of the better parts of this book, um, but still not incredible. So moving on to the world building, you know, I found the world to be interesting. Um, the world has a very mysterious thing going on up in the north where you have this enormous wall, kind of think like uh, the A Song of Ice and Fire, where they have pushed out a, a great evil on the other side of the wall and it's been many, many hundreds of years, if not thousands of years, maybe. I think I'm getting my timelines right. Um, and people just don't think that there's anything, a problem there anymore, but very clearly there is. And it, it feels so a song of ice and fire. But I find that interesting. I'm intrigued by that. And I, I liked it. Now, ultimately, the problem with the world for me is that it feels very small. I mean, characters are traveling a decent size, a, a, a pretty far distance on this map. The map's not huge. And within, you know, chapters. And so I'm not left with that awe of this world like I get. Now, I don't want to claim that like bigger is better when it comes to worlds. Although a little bit of that, 
You know, I do find myself transfixed with these overwhelmingly large worlds. I've said many times that I love a world that is way bigger than we see on paper. You know, I'm thinking of a, um, like a Malazan, where, you know, events happen, but you also get the sense that there's a lot else going on and we're just kind of getting a snippet of this world. And that's just not the case here. You know, it feels like all major events are feeding into these main characters, that they're at the center of everything going on, and that there's not a lot extra going on. You know, you don't get these moments that you get in a lot of other series where, you know, you get this feel of village life as you're going through it, that there's other people in this world. And that's disappointing. From a, from a world building perspective, it kind of sucks me out a little bit. Um, so yeah, it's decent, but definitely not memorable. Um, and, and I feel like that's like my tagline for, for this book is decent, not memorable. Um, I'll try not to say that a lot, but that is how I feel about so many of these different aspects. So when it comes to the fantasy elements, there's quite a bit going on here. You've got these two main magic systems. They're both kind of fun to learn about. They're not the most in-depth in the world, but they are fun. And it leaves you with this decent mix of understanding the basics of it and then learning about why that's wrong and why there's more to it and all the details of that as we go on through the book. I like that. Um, I also did enjoy um, that the that you have this the, that oppressed thing that I was talking about where you have these magic users who cannot just like unfiltered use their magic whenever they want. There's these rules set up in society. There's a pact that's been made. Um, you have these characters that don't that are on the run and they don't want to use their magic because if they use their magic, people will find out about them. There's like these kind of evil creatures that are hunting them. Um, there's, there's fun things about this book from the magic side of things. So I, I did enjoy that. Now there's a couple things I did not enjoy about the fantasy elements here. One of them is there is some time travel and man, I hate time travel in books. Uh, you know, there are some exceptions to this, but essentially you run into the same age old problem of, infinite timelines and the problems that associates with things and if there's not an infinite timeline there's problems itself on that you know i'm just not a major time travel fan and i get that it's a very popular thing it just doesn't super work for me i also was disappointed at the extreme use of dreams and their foretelling nature here it felt very black and white and cut and dry, like everything, like there's a lot of moments here with these dreams and they kind of bore me. I, that's a personal thing though. I don't love dreams in my books. Um, now it's, I guess it's kind of interesting that you know that they're all there for a purpose and we're gonna get that as we go along, but I like my foretelling nature in books to be a little bit more vague, not so like in your face and that's what we get here. Um, so let's talk quickly about the characters. I don't want to go into all of them. There's a decent cast here, but again, they're bland. I don't get that rich sense of like understanding how different these characters are and what makes them so unique. I don't find myself super connected with these characters. Um, I just, they're just forgettable. And I know that months are going to go by and so much of this book, I'm just going to straight up forget. And that's disappointing. I don't want that. I want book. I want a book to stay with me forever and ever and ever, like so many great fantasy books do. Not the case here. So quickly, the writing quality. Again, it's okay. Um, I don't want to like rag on James Islington. He's a, he's a decent writer. It just wasn't like the prose wasn't wonderful. A, a lot of the different writing choices were just like, you know putting words on a page and that's it. You know, there's not like these editing problems, but I'm just not wowed by anything that happened here. Now, again, this sounds super negative. I don't mean to come off so negative because it's an okay read. I finished it. I enjoyed a lot of things about this book. I'm on the edge of whether I should keep reading or not, but there's, you know, there's so much missed here that I felt like could have been wonderful. And I, I'm left kind of, sometimes I read a, a series and I'm, it's, it's not super popular. I think like Hanius is in that realm of like, a lot of people that read a lot of fantasy know about the series, have read the series, but it's not in the mainstream. 
And so many times when I read these kind of books, I'll read it and I'll be like, what are people thinking? This book is wonderful. I get it. I get why this book is not mainstream. And, and it's not because it's too complicated. It's not simple. I mean, there are some complicated aspects here, but you know, what's holding it back is just its lack of being amazing. It's just not that. So ultimately my enjoyment was like a three out of five. Uh, just okay. Um, I don't know who I'd recommend this book to. I, I don't know that I would. I do know that some people probably are obsessed with this book though. I, I get that there's probably like a type of person out there or many types of fantasy fans that will have this book as an all time great for them. I wish I was there. I just can't be. Um, so I'll, I'll leave it off on that. So uh, this is the second book I read today. Um, I, I always listen to an audio and a physical. Sometimes they line up. Um, the other one that I read was a super easy five out of five. Uh, it's amazing. Check out the review right over there. It's Enemy of God. It's incredible. Check out that review. I am a lot more excited about that one than I was here. So I will wrap it up there. Thank you so much for bearing with me. And as always, happy reading to you. Thank you so much again to my patrons and a special shout out to my Ascendant tier patrons, Danute, Sky, and Russell. I super appreciate it.